Today's discussion is based on this concept, garments of mind, which is stimulated from As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. I had this idea today upon reflection on some of the earlier personal development experiences, as well as the information that I was learning when I started out on this journey. One of the ideas that was shared with me was to dress in a way that elevates your self-esteem and self-confidence. And so that when you show up to wherever it is that you go, you feel a higher degree of self-esteem, self-confidence. So it appears that these articles of clothing bring forth a certain state of mind in which we call it self-confidence. Now the interpretation is still from within, although this interpretation is deep thought buried in the subconscious in which we have associations to certain articles of clothing in which it brings forth a certain feeling or state of mind in which we call self-confidence. Now, if we go a little deeper into this, as we have been discussing, we are actually wearing garments right now as we interact with this reality. These are the garments of mind, states of mind. The states of mind represents the thoughts, how we behave, how we emotionally integrate, and reveals how we relate to outer world circumstance, information, environment, people, and so forth. We've been discussing how to identify with these subconscious garments of mind states through the process of working with the subconscious mind because that's where we wear them subconsciously. Unlike an article of clothing or a certain wardrobe where it's visible via the five senses, experienced via the five senses, the garment of mind is experienced via the sixth sense, intuition. And to the degree that we increase our consciousness on the observation of our experiences that we have each day, we'll be able to reflect back to observe what it is that we are wearing as far as states of mind go. Now, Orson Sweat Martin said it really well, where he says, we should all go through life as though we were sent here with a sublime mission to lift, to help, to boost, and not depress and discourage, and so discredit the plan of the Creator. Our conduct should show that we are on this earth to play a magnificent part in life's drama, to make a splendid contribution to humanity. Let's really zone in on this part here. Play a magnificent part in life's drama. Just in like a theatrical performance, some of you might be in the space of performing arts, you wear a certain wardrobe. And as you navigate through life, you also wear an invisible wardrobe. We call that the state of mind. You are transcendent too the state of mind, and you select the state of mind, and you embody the state of mind, and you observe through the outer world reflections your embodiment of that state of mind. Now let's weave this into a quote here from James Allen's As a Man Thinketh to further emphasize this. And I want to also integrate this from the perspective of one of my favorite books called Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. And we'll integrate that in a moment. So James Allen states, Here is a youth hard-pressed by poverty and labor, confined long hours in an unhealthy workshop, unschooled and lacking all the arts of refinement. But he dreams of better things. He thinks of intelligence, of refinement, of grace and beauty. He conceives of, mentally builds up an ideal condition of life, the vision of a wider liberty and a larger scope takes possession of him. Unrest urges him into action, and he utilizes his spare time and means, small though they are, 
to the development of his latent powers and resources. Very soon, so altered has his mind become that the workshop can no longer hold him. It has become so out of harmony with his mentality that it falls out of his life as a garment is cast aside. And with the growth of opportunities, which fit the scope of his expanding powers, he passes out of it forever. So there we see it again. It becomes so out of harmony with his mentality that it falls out of his life as a garment is cast aside. This is what we're dwelling in. This is what we're wearing, the inner garment. And we know when we're wearing it based on how we feel, how we interact, how we relate to the experiences. So when we looked at this earlier part of the quote here, and he says, a youth hard-pressed by poverty and labor, and what had appeared at a certain perspective to be unhealthy workshop, unschooled and lacking the arts of refinement, is something that we want to recognize as an evolving circumstance, an evolving outer world experience, because as he maintains that, which he first built in his mind, the ideal condition of his life, which was the vision, and we're working with the subconscious, then what happens? Things start to change. Reality starts to change. An individual's behaviors and their environments begin to change, to reflect. And it changes. Still, it reflects that vision. What we are here to do is play the role of whatever it is that you desire to see brought forth. And it's up to you to maintain and wear that garment of mind from a place of congruence. Now, one of the things that can happen on the journey is reactivity. And we want to switch that over, not necessarily with everything, but the things in relation to our vision and then continue on the journey over to mindful response. Now, some of you might be familiar with the book Influence Psychology of a Persuasion. Normally, uh, it's a book discussed from the perspective of marketing. And if you've been watching my information for a while and you're a student of my programs and you know that I am a advocate for learning, direct response marketing, consultative selling, and copywriting. This is usually discussed and learned in the world of business, specifically entrepreneurship. However, I believe that everyone would benefit from dedicating time to learn about these areas because then they'll realize how they were a lot of times unknowingly persuaded to wear certain garments in the mind. What we want, however, is to be able to consciously choose the vision and embody it. So we're going to look at these elements here. There's six of them. And then when he re-released or he updated the book and released it again, he added another element. These are the elements of persuasion that he had identified through his research. Let's discuss them from the perspective of our discussion because there's many applications for these particular principles. Number one is reciprocity. So we value equality and harmony at a deep level. Then we've got commitment and consistency, which is essentially forming habits and patterns of thinking in relation to actions which reveal. So if a person looks at their behaviors and their environment, they can start to recognize what it is that they are wearing subconsciously as the garment of mind, valuing the outer world as a reflection of what's within is enormous when it comes to not just self-analysis, but what can be done about it. The same is to be said about social proof in relation to others. Simply put, it is stated that many will make decisions based on the volume of people making that decision and thus can be swayed by the opinions as we elevate in our understanding of the cause and effect relationship, effect in the outer world and cause within we can change these associations and respond a lot more mindfully. One wouldn't necessarily take an action based on the majority behaving a certain way. From this understanding that we are going into certain states of mind, when we identify with certain thinking, 
we can observe that, become present, and select a different state of mind, and thus automatically express a different action, one that is in harmony with the vision. Liking. We enjoy dealing with others that we like. These elements are wired into our being, and we want to work with them in a way that helps us move forward towards our vision, such as authority here. If we perceive someone to be authoritative, however, if for whatever the reason may be, it may not be an actual credible, true authoritative source of information, we might react and move down that thread. So mindful response and awareness is very important on this journey. And all of this is happening from the garment that we are wearing in our mind, our state of mind. As James Allen states, mind is the master weaver, both of the inner garment of character and the outer garment of circumstance, and that as they have hitherto woven in ignorance and pain, they may now weave in enlightenment and happiness. So what is happening on the journey here is we are recognizing that our inner interpretations of whatever it is that we are integrating with in the five sensory world is based on states of mind that we are wearing, that we are transcendent to, and that we are subconsciously identify with those from a place of reactivity. And we can self-persuade ourselves to identify with states of mind that are in harmony and thus dwell in those states of mind. Now, how does this look? Let's say somebody embodies a state of mind where the vision is to bring forth a successful entrepreneurial endeavor. They embody that state of mind. They see themselves in the vision. They maintain it. What they will notice is in relation to these attributes, and we'll talk about scarcity and unity in a moment, is they will feel the harmony. So the reciprocity is they will feel the deeper connection with the people that they're dealing with in the entrepreneurial journey. And they are the ones that are accurate to bringing forth the vision. They have found their team. Commitment and consistency, the behaviors, the congruence is there. Thought processes, actions, and the thus response from the actions are congruent in relation to that garment of mind. Social proof, they're around people, masterminds, individuals who are reflective of the vision. Automatically, they have this desire to be around certain people that seem to support their vision. And as we gravitate towards those that we like, we find ourselves connecting with people that are deeply related to us, thus further understanding the concept of how those outside of us play out the theater within ourselves based on what we think about ourselves and how we relate to them, what we think about them what we assume and interpret about them and ourselves and our relationship to them. And when it comes to authority, then we are around people that we find that are teachers. As the saying goes, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When I always like to say that the teacher and student are one. The teacher learns from the student, and the student learns from the teacher. So in this kind of harmonious relationship, it's actually oneness, which brings us to another point, which was an added element in relation to the elements of persuasion that he discussed, which he talked about in his latest version of the book, which is unity, bringing to oneness. Now, this is something where, as we continue to go down this inner pathway of realization, we reflect upon the quote that we learned from the Kabbalion. Everything is and isn't at the same time, and thus makes it all one. We're the ones assigning the meaning from within. Or as James Allen puts in really well right here when he states, a particular train of thought persisted in, be it good or bad, cannot fail to produce its results on the character and circumstances. Your circumstances may be uncongenial, but they shall not long remain. So if you but perceive an ideal and strive to reach it, you cannot travel within and stand still without. So all of the changes happen from within as we continue to go as deep as we can to the source of what is bringing it all forth. Scarcity, which is another principle. Valuing what is rare. Now when we 
go into our discussions, we have been revealing that creation is already complete. And what we're doing is we're selecting in our imagination. We're committing to something. And we're allowing ourselves to be guided from within to the realization of that vision. Then what happens is that there's more mindful response as to what to do and when not to do. We find less reactivity because we say that we are a lot more trusting. Thus, what we experience is a higher degree of the unity connected with because we've also been discussing that all things are added from a certain state of mind. And that's why this is one of my favorite books. And I love listening to the audio book of this. James Allen's As a Man Thinketh over and over again. Because every time I listen to it, I get deeper understandings. And I'm able to integrate it based on what I'm learning from other sources. I find myself even, and I'm noticing as I'm having conversations with others who also work with this kind of information, that they're able to find inspiration in sources or areas in which at one point they were unconsciously avoiding. That's because they're really understanding this unity element here. Now, we can look at this from the perspective or how it was discussed in the book, which was essentially people like to be around those in which they feel a oneness of identities with. Now, as we go deeper into this discussion, it's important to recognize that the identities is what we are selecting. So we are transcendent to the identities. And the identities can be looked at as the garments of the mind. And just as we wear certain wardrobes, certain costumes, we also wear states of mind. It's transcendent to how the body interacts and what we wear actually. Because if you're in a certain state of mind, and let's say it's a confident state of mind, chances are you're going to dress more confidently. And then what happens is as we interact with people, they may start commenting your wardrobe. And while there are associations to the wardrobe, there are also deeper associations. What they find within you is that confidence that you are wearing in your mind. We call that the garment of mind. So what we want is to recognize the importance of this quote here from Orson Sweat Martin when he says, our conduct should show that we are on this earth to play a magnificent part in life's drama, to make it a splendid contribution to humanity. We're playing roles. And these visions that we have, these desires that we want to see brought forth, we've been discussing, what you want wants you back. Others show up to play the theater with you. They reveal. Then we understand further this reciprocity, commitment and consistency. Now, if we find ourselves on the side of reactivity in relation to, so in other words, a person becomes reactive and thus looks for an authoritative finger from the place of reactivity or becomes reactive and starts to think scarcity, we have to remind ourselves that all things exist. And we need to prove it in ourselves by bringing forth our vision, committing, and not giving up. The way that we know is by bringing it forth, by not giving up. What also ends up happening is our thinking changes and how we integrate with these attributes here. And I recommend reading this book. The application of what's being discussed in the book here is related to our discussion, but there are many applications and examples that he gives from different perspectives, which if you're in the space of entrepreneurship, then it could be very helpful. But I also, as suggested, recommend others learn these elements of persuasion because then you understand how you got to where you are right now and what are the garments of mind, states of mind that you are wearing, how to change it, and thus how to maintain it. If we can understand how we are being persuaded, then we can change how we are being persuaded and we can self-persuade. As mentioned, there's only four modalities that I work with that for me has helped me along my journey. And when I work with businesses and clients, I like to work with those four modalities when it comes to them wearing with consistency 
those garments of mine. And they are self-talk, audio affirmations, revision, and environment. Environment is what we are associating meaning to a lot of times subconsciously. And in certain environments, we feel more comfortable, like the clothing. Just as it is true for the clothing, based on the associations from within, it is also true based on the garments of mind. So when I go back to what I had learned in the earlier stages to dress the way, and by the way, I have a friend that does this and has had discussions with me about this, about how his sales go up when he does this. He actually dresses up in a suit and does his sales calls from home. And he has said to me, and I've seen it, when he dresses that way, he communicates differently. And he ends up facilitating a lot more deals. This is why we say it's important to set up your office and your environment to be a certain way, one of harmony in relation to your vision. And even go back to our examples of performing arts. You set the stage. And then within the stage, you allow yourself to express. And those are outer garments. And what we also want to value is the inner garments. So mind is the master weaver, as James Allen states both of the inner garment of character and the outer garment of circumstance, and that how they may now weave in enlightenment and happiness. It's through awareness of this causative factor. Certainly this is something that can be associated to a garment. Then what we also understand is when we're in certain states of mind, we feel comfortable in certain clothes, and in certain states of mind, we don't. So another conversation that I had with my friend was, there are some times where he doesn't feel comfortable getting into that suit before he makes the sales calls. And then he recognizes that he is in a state of mind, which we would call low self-esteem or low self-confidence. Then what he does is he puts on the suit and then he calibrates automatically based on the associations to that suit within his own mind. And he gets himself in that state of mind. And then he ends up performing. Now, it doesn't mean that a person has to do this. But this is all part of knowing thyself. And that actually what is happening is the suit brings them into the certain state of mind, as well as we've been working with imagination, brings you into a certain state of mind. So be aware of what garment you are wearing in your mind as it is revealed in these particular elements. Perhaps a person might feel that they are operating from a place of scarcity in which they feel there's not enough resources or they start getting into certain kinds of approval or validation-seeking behaviors in relation to dealing with people in their lives, which would be an indication of the state of mind that they are embodying. Maybe they're noticing that they don't have the discernment on authoritative figures, as mentioned, subconsciously in a certain state of mind. Someone is perceived as an authoritative figure in that state of mind, but in a different state of mind, that person is not perceived as an authoritative figure. The same is to be said about all of these, social proof. In a certain state of mind, you might want to be in a certain group, and then in a different state of mind, you find yourself in a different group, influenced by that group. All of this has been stimulated from within via this garment, and it is revealed based on our reactivity or mindful responses or automatic response in harmony to your vision. So when you reflect back at the end of the day, you do see that you are in the right place at the right time, doing the right things, dealing with the right environments. And you felt at a deep level this, because I believe that's why he added it in the later version, the sense of unity. You realize that everything is connected to you. You're one with it. This becomes obvious as we continue to work on this because what we are really learning through this whole journey as we do this is working with the mind. We have a mind and we have the power to saturate the mind. Or as James Allen puts it, a particular train of thought persisted in, be it good or bad, cannot fail to produce its results on the character and circumstances. The character can be looked at as the garment and the circumstances can be looked at as the reflection. We change it all within ourselves. And as we change within ourselves, we find that the outer world changes automatically, although much of it can also be facilitated 
by behavioral change. Questions that we want to ask ourselves is, what brings us into those states of mind, such as my friend who discovered wearing the suit? Or what kind of inner conversations and working with imagination, as we've been discussing, also visualization, brings us into that state of mind? And then as we continue to do this, as we maintain it, then we'll find that we'll automatically be able to do it. And this has also been reported by my friend. He says what he's finding is that he's even noticing that he could show up wearing different outfits, and he still is able to do it, maintain that state of mind. But in the earlier stages, he felt that he had to wear the suit, which is fine because all of this is doing the same thing. It is helping us put on the inner garment of mind that reflects as our five sensory integration in relation to bringing forth our vision. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.